Hi everybody, happy Sunday wherever you are in the world. It's mid-afternoon here uh, and it's another <laughs> rainy day in August. Oh dear me, surely we're due some summer sometime. But however, it's sunny in my craft room. It really is, it's lovely. Um, and I'm looking forward to actually doing some journaling today. Yesterday we had a, an exciting day with three giveaways and they'll be in the post uh, to the recipient, the winners tomorrow on Monday. Um, but in the meantime, let's crack on with this spring journal that I showed you yesterday. Uh, I mean, we just touched on it really yesterday. Um, but we got up to this point um, with this book page that I've got folded in half. And we were just making this um, side pocket down here. Um, so I finished that off and stuck it on. And I just want to make a journaling card now to go uh, into it. So I've cut this bit of um, design paper to there, which I think is fine. And I'm going to, I've just printed it on one side. So I'm going to back it with coffee stained paper as you've seen me do a million times. Um, and this journal's got a lot of sewn elements. Um, I'm, I'm using the machine quite a lot on this. I, I love the look of sewn things. I think they just look a little bit more sort of finished, if you like. I'm just going to try and use these two sides, um, make it easier cutting it out. Put it across that way. I've missed both sides there, I think. Never mind. Just cut it out. Bit of excess glue there that I don't need. So, how are you? How is everyone? I hope you're all well and happy and healthy and warm. Not too warm, not too cold. Uh, I think if you live in the southern hemisphere, you're in winter now. So you're probably having weather not dissimilar to what uh, we've got here. So I'm just cutting around that. Now I'm going to sew that. Sew around there. And I just haven't placed it exactly on the bottom. So I'm just going to trim that off. And up this side, which I managed to miss as well. So I hope you're all journaling or making little folios or doing your page for the collaborative journal. Whatever it may be, I hope you're doing it and I hope you're having fun. Don't stress over it. It's just paper at the end of the day. Um, I know we all do stress to a certain point. We all want everything to be perfect, don't we? So that's that. I'm just... Um, I'm just going to take my, what is this called, shaded lilac and I'm just going to do a bit of ever so light stenciling on the back there just um, so it looks loved. And I'm using this, if you've got a, a big shot or something similar, once you've cut your shape, your dies out, you're left with this which to me looks like stencils so I'm just going to use that um, as sort of stencils and put some I'm just dabbing it on really I don't want it too heavy uh, it is a journaling card and I want people to be able to uh, write over it just to you know just a hint a hint on really I don't want Ooh. it hello that was me talking yeah. <laughs> So there we are, it's just a little hint like that. And I really like that effect, actually. Um, I'm glad I stumbled upon it. However I did, I don't know. So the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a tag like that on the side. So it's obvious that it's um, moving this around when it's not sewn up on top of other pieces of paper. It's a nightmare, um, however. So I just want to check that I've got enough room. That's going to go in there. Let's just check I've got enough room for that there. Uh, 
just haven't is that in as far as it can go let's just check because I need this page to be able to fold over just I think going to have to take another little another little bit uh, of the width of that and I'll take it down this side Roll call. roll call. Let's have a roll call. Maureen. Hi, Hi Maureen. Lynn Whitman. Lynn, hello. Hilda Davidson. Hilda, hello, Hilda. Kerry Roberts. Kerry. Miranda Holmes. Miranda. Pat hello, Pat. Jen Sinclair Bling. Uh, hello, Miss Bling. Flo Syndra. Hi, Flo. Candice Andrews. And Candice. I've still got your card here, Candice. Look at that. Roz. Roz. Helen Adams. Hello, Helen. Your uh, prize will be on its way to you tomorrow. Sandra Hosgates. Oh, is that Hello, new... everybody. I'm new to all this. Hello, Sandra. Well, you won't be new for long. Um, we're all here. We're all here to help you. If you get stuck, have a question. Uh, generally want to show off what you've done. We all love that. Um, we all love poring over things going on and on. Um, yeah, that's fine now. Can I just say at this stage that we have a sister group on Facebook and it's called Miss Paint-A-Lot's Junk Journal Group. Miss Paint-A-Lot's Junk Journal Group. And if you pop over there, you'll see all the same faces that you're seeing here pretty much uh, on our group. And they are a great bunch. They really are supportive and helpful. And if you have any questions with anything or whatever it is that you think we can help with, junk journal related, then pop over there. And if you have, you know, if you haven't got any questions, just look at everybody else's work. It's there's some glorious things that get posted on there. So you'd be very welcome over there. And Donna's with us. Hello, Donna. I think that's everybody. Shout out if I've missed you. There must be some. Oh, Debbie Bankston. Hi, Debbie. Debbie's been making some beautiful. Um, well, she refers to them as die cut lampshades. And they sort of go on top of mason jars or glasses or whatever. Um, and they're, they're really beautiful. So pop over to Debbie's page and have a look at what she's doing. So I'm just lightly inking around here with this uh, very light coloured ink, which is called Antique Linen. Um, a lot of people use the vintage photo. It's more brown. Tea dye is somewhere in between the two. There's... Um, walnut stain which is very dark there's ground espresso there is a whole host of browns and you will eventually come across one that you know is the one that you want to use and i don't want this one to look grungy at all so i'm using this very light antique linen as you can see it really is just kind of a whisper around the edge but it does finish it off and that's nice so this is going to go there um, and this is this has been cut with my super duper duper new tag cutter look at that i've wanted one for years and finally i have one thanks to hilda very much hilda supports our channel enormously um, and she sent me this and so now i can cut tags out to my heart's content in whatever color i want and whatever color i want brings me to a question that pat asked last night on the group saying that I always seem to have a good stock of um, card in various colours. And, and I do. I absolutely do have a good stock of card in various colours, as you can see here. There's all sorts of... There's, there's loads of other colours I've got, but these are the ones I thought might be springtime. And we get them from a company here in the UK called papermilldirect.co.uk. They are... Um, I think they produ they produce paper for crafters basically, and they produce things like uh, cards and envelopes, that sort of thing. And when they've made the cards, they obviously have sort of offcuts, and they just dump them all into a box. And when it weighs a certain amount, they sell them. And it, it's quite a big sort of like a ream size box, and it costs how much? 
£7.15. Yeah, I mean, there is postage as well, but you get loads of offcuts. And for us, that's great. I mean, that's just that's, a narrow bit there. It's a box that you would actually get about five reams in. It's a box you get five reams in. There you go. I mean, it's quite, it's quite deep. And it's A4 size, but quite deep. Okay. And full of goodies. So let's stick this uh, down onto here. Kareen's joined us. Hi, Kareen. Lenny Von Nestu. Hello. Carol Beading. Hello, Carol. And Joseph Cinderella. Joseph? <laughs> it's Flo. She's borrowed her husband's. She's masquerading. IPad. Should have done it yesterday, Flo. You could have had two entries into the giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there we are. That's got that stuck around it and I'm just going to put it slightly nearer the top than the bottom and pop that there. I'm just going to pull it so it's like that. So when I sew, sew around the uh, the journaling card I'll catch that in with it as well uh, to secure it. So let's just squash that down make sure it, ooh. Lots of glue. So there we are. I'm just going to whiz around that. And that looks like a bit of pencil there. Don't quite know why. But it was, so it's gone. Right, I'm just going to whiz around here. Whizzy whiz. And I'm using a straight stitch on a medium length. And I'm using a mark on my foot, my presser foot to guide me. If I always keep the same mark on the, on the same line then it will be straight and it will be the same width all the way around. I know some of you are quite sceptical about using your sewing machines for sewing paper. I must say I have never ever had a problem, I'm tempting fate now, but I must have sewn miles of paper. I mean I really must have done. And it it just sews it. It sews it as if it was sewing fabric. And people say don't sew through glue stick. I've sewn through everything. I've sewn through glue stick, fabric tack, you name it. And no, I don't have to change my needle very often at all. Um, it just seems to do it. And this is an expensive machine. It's a very expensive machine, actually. But I also have a cheap machine that I used to use for, <clears throat> excuse me, for classes. And I've tried it on that too, just in case it was just this machine that worked like a dream. Um, but no, the cheap machine works brilliant as well. So, you know. Get your machines out and have a go. I know all of you say, oh, you know, I can't do this and I can't do that. Nobody can do anything. The, the, the example I give is, who was born able to be a grand pianist? You know, sit in front of the Royal Albert Hall and play the piano. Nobody is the answer. Nobody was born able to do that. We all have to practice. Um, and the more you practice, the better you'll get. It's just a simple fact. So, uh, Jean has joined us. Hello, Jean. She said she was waiting because she followed your invitation. Ah. Oh. But you didn't say that it was on YouTube, of course. Oh. Yeah. No. I thought I had, but I must be honest, I put that uh, create the event thing on using my MacBook, not my iPad as I normally do. And it was all really different. So I'm sorry if I've um, confused the situation there. So let's just check that that fits in and that folds over. Excellent. So I'll just put a little bit of decoration on there because why wouldn't we? And what I've sort of looked out for this is a bit, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat again. Uh, a bit of ribbon going down there a little bit of this cream fabric I was talking about yesterday. Actually, maybe that would look quite nice there. And this is just another one of those 
Tim Holtz die cuts from the field notes field notes set and I'm thinking of putting that on there mm. I quite like that there's nothing wrong with that I don't think okay <clears throat> whilst I was <coughs> excuse me whilst I was at Hobbycraft the other day I came across because I use a lot of satin ribbon and I came across this set Trim it satin ribbons. Look at all the lovely colours. <laughs> uh, aren't they gorgeous? They're really lovely. I haven't used any of them yet. And actually, I was so excited to find these. I didn't look to see whether there was another set in dark colours or brights or whatever they call them. So this is the only one I have at the moment. And I can't remember how much they, they were, but they're just... Thanks very much for that. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but thank you. Diet Coke, guys, nothing exciting. Um, so we shouldn't ever run out of ribbon for our spring journal. In the meantime, however, let's get back to this. So if I put that down there, like that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Tiffany Williams says, hello from Indiana. Hello, Indiana. Is that the, is that the Hoosier state? Is it? I don't dare say that in case it's... It, derogatory <laughs> just we used to watch the middle and i'm sure they were from indiana and i'm sure they referred to themselves as hoosiers so let's hope it's <laughs> let's hope it's not not derogatory in any way oh my goodness i wish sometimes i'd keep my mouth shut um right this hasn't been curled up and put away so this end has gone a bit iffy So I'm just going to start from the bottom of my tag up the side of my stitches which I'm hoping are square otherwise it's going to look a bit off and just right to the top there you don't need to put says, yes ma'am it is hooray <laughs> <laughs> excellent and we, ha we don't appear to have offended her. That's even better. It is the Hoosier State. The Hoosier State. <laughs> so there is only the one. All right. I wonder what it means. It sounds to me like a fireman. Because <laughs> I think it's like, oh, hose. Um, yeah. <laughs> possibly. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will tell us. Yeah, I wish somebody would, actually. Relieve us of our ignorance. Yes. So, um... I've got loads lined up for today's live and I hope we can get through some of it and actually <laughs> do some journaling because goodness me yesterday we got nothing done really. So I'm just stick I'm just gonna cut that off again because it's just got a tiny little thread that I don't want. So I'm just gonna stick that down over the top of my double sided there. Trim that off at the back. There we are. And uh, this is this cotton I was telling you about yesterday. Uh, it was, it's just, this isn't the same, but it's pretty, oh, actually I have got the stuff here. Buried, buried under everything else. Oh my life. Uh, this is it. So it's just uh, ordinary cotton, cream colored. Like I said, I think you'd describe it as patchwork weight probably. Um, and I just, I'll show you what I do. I just snip it. This is the selvage, the bit that's bound tightly. So I just snip it at the width that I sort of wanted through the selvage and then rip it. And you've got to be quite strong, really. And that's, it's not cut straight, that's all. And this is what you get. And it looks a bit of a dog's dinner, but by the time that you take off all these sort of loose threads and whatever, you get left with a really nice usable and sort of um, oh, frayed and interesting, more than just a cut edge. So that's what the kind of thing you get left with. And I like to use that. So let me just put that away somewhere because I don't need that. Michelle, mm -hmm. hello. 
So I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to put it the other way because this is more fluffy on this side. Um, Hoosier is a native or inhabitant of Indiana. Well, there you go. So they can't all be firemen. I don't think. There's a lot of fires in Indiana. Well, there won't be any with that many firemen. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. so yeah that's what i'm going to do and i think that's enough can i just um remind you what, what that little uh cutter is it's it's these the tim holtz um and the die cut it's called field notes and you get loads of them in a packet and they are so useful and I know that you could print them all out. I know that you could all, you know, fussy cut them all. But who wants to? Who actually would really sit and fussy cut that out? I know there are some of you, but I wouldn't. And so I'm, I'm really glad to have that. It's ever so useful. So I'm going to actually use double sided again to stick this down. Because if I use glue on it, it'll show through and it'll look nasty. So I'm just going to put a little bit of double sided um, on the back of that. That's not right to each end, just enough to hold it. Hilda says, my oh my, look at all that fabric as much as my goals, Fiona. As much as, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Really, Hilda? I thought that you had loads more goals yeah. than that. I thought that you had probably 20 yards of it or something. She's trying to justify. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to make herself feel better. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. She can do that. <laughs> yeah, I do. Well, I don't have as much fabric as I used to have. We uh, sold a lot off at the back end of last year. So there we are. That's that on there. And then there's just this to put on there. And I think... You know, it's a bit of faffing around, but I do think it's worth it. It now looks like somebody cared enough about this to do that. And, you know, we, we all do. We all care that much about our journals. So um, take the time and finish things off nicely would be my advice. You know, you never want to look through a journal that you've finished and think, oh, well, that would have been nicer if I'd just done this or if I'd just done that. Do it. So then when you finish a journal and you sell it or you give it to someone, you know there's no more that you could have actually done. It is the best work you can do. That's my finger I just stuck that into, which I didn't mean to. <laughs> so there we are. That's fine. That's nice. It's got that little bit on the back as well. So we're all sorted with regards to that. Let's bring in the journal. Pop that into there. And that still folds over just perfectly. So we're now left with this. And bearing in mind what I've just said about, you know, doing the very best that you can on every element. And I know it takes time and I, I know, I know all that. But I was thinking if I put that there with a little bit of gauze, get your gauze out, Hilda. <laughs> Quick, grab your gauze. Um... And some gems on there, Jen, uh, that I think that would just finish that little uh, ensemble, ensemble off nicely. So I've got some gauze. It's white because I don't know where I put my other gauze, but it'll be fine. Um, Jean says she loves the ribbon stopping mid page. Thank you. Donna says very pretty card. And Kareem says, I love, the tech, I love you take the time to do your best with each journal. Well, the thing is, I do sell. I'm saying I sell. <laughs> I tend to give away these days, but that doesn't matter. Somebody is the end user other than me. And I never want them to open a journal up and be disappointed. I couldn't bear it. I, I really couldn't bear it. So I think if I can do the best that I can do, then nobody's going to open a journal up and think, well, that would have been nice if she'd just done this, that or the other. So that's just a little bit of gauze just in behind there. And I'll stick him down. And I think that looks quite nice. The green there is echoed with the green there. Yeah, I think we're doing all right. So I'm just going to put a bit of um, Fabri-Tac down here. 
just stick the gauze on too. If any of you are watching that haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please, could you, please, please. Um, it's not intrusive. It doesn't, you know, doesn't email you or anything like that unless unless you click the bell and then it'll email you when I'm going live or um, when I've posted a video. But it's not intrusive at all. But it, may, it makes a huge difference to how Facebook, how YouTube rather, uh, see us and see our videos and how they share them. So that would be great if you could subscribe, please. Our numbers are getting up. I must say thanks to everybody. So I'm just going to pop that onto there. Ooh, I've become attached. Um, and then we can put some gems on and leave that alone to dry. Everything does take time. I will say that. You know, there's not much point sitting down and thinking, oh, I'll just knock out four or five journal pages tonight. No. If you can knock out one in a night, you're doing well, if you're me. So there we are. That's down. And we'll just put some gems on. One of our number, called Jen Sinclair, is will shout if we don't do it, okay? So rather than have Jen shouting, I'm just going to put some bling on. I do like it though. It's a nice finishing touch. So these are on my shopping list for next week. I need some more, some more bling. You get through it when you use it quite often, you know, as, as anything. Nancy. Hello Nancy from Colorado. Blimey, we're getting around the world. It's a shame that the time we do this is just not suitable for people in uh, Australia, New Zealand, etc. Jean wants to know whether they're called gems or gens. <laughs> that is such a good question, isn't it? That's brilliant. Gens, gems. <laughs> so I'm using E6000, which is uh, the glue that you need for um setting gems and it's clear crystals. crystals i guess yes so i have this tool that's got a sort of silicon end that allows you to pick these up and put them where you want them so i hope you can see those twinkling because they're twinkling away very nicely there we are right so i think that's that finished. I think when you open the page and you see that, you'll think, oh, that's pretty. And that's what we're after. Right. So I'm just going to leave that to dry for a little while while I show you. The people that have been with me some time will know about this. The people that haven't been with me for some time, this will be new to them, although you may know it anyway. Right. This is a little um, notebook. As you can see, I've put some die cuts on. This is the design paper from the pack, the kit that we're using. Um, and I've put some Tim Holtz wildflower die cuts on there. Uh, a butterfly that I got from online somewhere. A uh, bit of that white cotton that we dripped. And another one of those Tim Holtz um, die cuts along there. Two gems on there. So it twinkles away nicely and it looks nice. It coordinates with that. Now, inside, I've put some writing paper, or, well, paper to write on. And I've used this yellow pastel because it just looks like spring to me. And the other reason I've used it is, I don't know, I'm saying 20 years ago, probably something like that. I was in um, a shop that I think was called Staples here in the UK. And... Um, I've always been totally fixated by stationery of any sort. And they had this pack of pastel paper, just ordinary copy of weight paper, but pastel. And I was compelled to buy it. I had no use for it at all, um, but I just loved it. 
I had to have it. And so for 20 years, I've moved that around from house to house, wherever we've gone, has gone this pack of pastel paper. And today I've found a use for something, <laughs> so I'm delighted. So I'm using some of the yellow um, and I've cut it down to be the same size as this. Now, if you watched Mr. Fixit's video on how to print more than one image on a sheet of paper, um, you'll see that's uh, where I've got that from. So I've printed that out. I've cut my paper to be slightly, and it is just slightly um, shorter than that, and slightly, it's that much less wide. And what I've done is I've measured an inch in and then the center of those two marks. So I've got three marks right in the middle there, right on where it's going to fold. And I just need to push that in. I've got some pegs somewhere. So make sure that you get it centralized. And that they are all going to stay together. So I haven't left much margin of error here, so I'm going to have to be pretty accurate. So I think that's about it. So I'm just going to put a couple of pegs on there, one on one side. Make sure it's right up to the fold, one on the other. And hold it like that so as the, the V, the, the valley, is right at the bottom. And put something on top of your cutting board before you do this because you're going to poke holes through and you don't want the holes on your cutting board. They're expensive and you don't want to waste it, ruin it. So just push through where you've made the marks till you can hear it, that it's gone through. Same there, same here. And we're going to do what's called a three pamphlet stitch. So those, I don't know if you can see them, but they're right on that edge there, which is great. And I'm going to use some some of this to sew it with. And it, I think it's called Cotton Pearly Number 12. And it's this sort of heathery, um, mauve -y sort of colour, which I think will fit in with our journal. I don't know where the end is. <laughs> there is no end. Let's see if I can find an end. Ah, yeah, there we are. So allow yourself sort of at least three times um, the length of what you're doing. That will be more, much more than you need, but it's better to have more than less. And find yourself a needle. I think it might go through there. This is a useful stitch actually, just for little notebooks. And it's also useful when you come to putting your signatures into your journal. Um, if they're not too bulky, you might get away with this um, three-hole pamphlet stitch. So, so you go from the inside through the centre one, through that hole that you made. And i um, got a knot in it. There we go. And hold on to this end. Hold on to this end here. And then go up to the... This wants to knot on me. Then go up to the top hole, up there. Straight through the back into the, into the centre of your work. Like that. And when you see it start to pull on that, that's that's fine. Just hold on to that. Don't let it go all the way through. And straight down, straight down to the bottom and out through that hole that you made at the at the back. And then you come up through that middle hole. Now, this is the only bit that's it's not even tricky, but if you see, I've got this end on the right of this stitch. So I want to bring this up on the left of it. So just so I now have an end each side of that long central stitch and pull it tight 
and cut off your excess of which you'll have loads. Um, I'm just going to pop that away again otherwise it gets lost. And then you just tie it off in a knot. So it's very simple. You're knotting over that central long stitch. So that's fine. Then just tie a little, one little knot in your purlé, just in case it wants to fray. It shouldn't, but just to keep it. You can tie a bow if you want. A lot of people tie a bow in theirs. Uh, I'm not that keen on, on bows. It just adds a bit of bulk for no reason. So that's the knot to stop it fraying and just cut the other side of that. So there you are. You made yourself a nice little booklet. And that's it. There we are. And then down the edge, although you can't really see it, are the stitches. So that's that. So where is that going to go, Miss Paint a lot? You have a question? I was just noting that uh, because you've got your dark cardio and every time you put your arm across the screen it flares up because it obviously thinks it's too dark. I shall take it off. I'm quite warm anyway, and actually. Well, you're talking about the video that I did with the resize in the... Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I was just saying that I'm going to be doing another one soon. Yes, Mr Fixit's going to be doing a... He does the more techie ones. Um, I do the... I do this stuff... Mr. Fixit does the techie stuff. And we wanted to show you how you could meld a couple of images together using just Word. Because I know a lot of you haven't got Photoshop. And I know there are, um, what do you call it, freeware, whatever it's called out there, that's similar to Photoshop. But it's quite a complex bit of uh, software, actually, Photoshop. So just using Word that I'm sure all of you have, um, how to go about altering your images and here's one that Mr Fixit did last night while he was playing around. Now this background here is it's a background I did I made there's a video of me making that somewhere so we scanned in the actual background um, toned it down because these were very bright pink so we toned it down and then Mr. F's put these butterflies on, sort of cut the background out so of the butterflies, cut various bits so the background shines through. This is a little blue tip that I painted some time ago that he's put on this tree that also wasn't there. He's, a, he's put the tree there. So he will show you on the video how to add things, how to make things more or less opaque, how to tone things down, etc., etc. But isn't that lovely? That What a lovely image that is. I really like it and actually I'm glad that he's brought this little blue tip to my mind again um, because I might just use it in a spring journal. I was thinking about painting one but I've got one there already painted so um, I can use that and of course there's no copyright on the background or the blue tit because it's mine I painted them so there can't be. So stay tuned to our channel as I say if you've subscribed uh, hit the bell and then you'll know whenever a video goes up or a live is about to start uh, so you won't miss anything out but that is a really really going to be a really interesting tutorial not to put any pressure on Mr F but it is um, so back to this this is the page that we made you watch me make it with inks and gesso and whatever uh, and a, a design page from the kit and this is a design page from the kit. And all I've done is I've sewn each edge separately and then I've put them together and sewn across the top and across the bottom. And I want this little booklet to go just tucked into there. And if you bring it down, you can tuck it under that um, little tuck spot there and it will keep it secure. So that's the idea for that. That idea of putting a little notebook into a double page like that came from Angela Kerr. Thank you, Angela. Um, she has some fabulous ideas and does some fabulous videos. Um, so she's another one, really, that you want to hop over to on YouTube and subscribe. 
you won't be disappointed. She does some lovely stuff. All right. Where are we now? Well, on the other side of this, I want to put a big journaling card in. But that's fair. I think you can probably fathom that out. It's If we get time, we'll do it. Um, but next up is this lovely Edith Holden page. And I, I couldn't bring myself to cut it. For one thing, here it says March, and it's an entire poem by Wordsworth about March, which is perfect for us because this is our March signature. But here you've got the folded over bit. So I thought that I would put an envelope in there, just put a safety pin to keep it in place. So how do we make the envelope? Well, you could make it out of design paper if you wanted to. Nothing wrong with that. But I decided that I would make mine out of text from a book. So that's what I did. I stuck two pieces of, of book together. And generally when you stick two pages together, it's the right way there. I'm reading it the right way. And then you fold it up and it's the wrong way. But this is the right way because I spent some time this morning working out how to do that. So I shall show you that now, exactly what I did. It's not complicated, and once you see it, you'll think, yeah, that's right, why didn't I think of that? Um, so I'm just going to take two pages that are all text, that don't have sort of chapters or chapter headings on them. So there we are. Any book will do, but do you know, uh, cast a thought for whether it's got rude words or anything like that in it because you don't want to be caught out like that. So I've got this one with the text going that way. I can read it. And then this one... Can you just wait a minute because I've lost the... Oh. Keep talking. You're on the other camera. Oh, right. But okay. don't do what you're doing. Oh, right. Just, just, just talk. Just look at the camera. And I'll just have a drink if that's away. all right. What's happened to it? I hit the wrong button. All right, I see. Um, yeah, and I also have some gorgeous napkins. Well, our gorgeous napkin, I think it was Hilda that sent it to me, that's going to come into its own here in a second or two. I don't know what that means. Oh, shut up. If you like, I can search the web for. Hey, Siri, yeah, and I also have some gorgeous napkins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she wouldn't work yesterday. Now we can't shut her up. Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, it seems dear me. Be flipped upside down for some reason. All oh, right. Okay. Well, do you want to stop and start again? No. You see, you don't get this with other channels, do you? You know, it's seamless, effortless, and now we're upside down. I don't know why it's done that. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I was going to tell you about flipping paper upside down. I flipped myself upside down. And then, and then Siri chimes in. Honestly. <laughs> right, there we go. Put you the right way up. Okay, I'm the right way up now. Hello. I just need to zoom in slightly again. <laughs> yes, Rose, silly Siri. <laughs> Siri's at it again, says Carrie. Yes. <laughs> oh my life anyway you couldn't buy it anyway right what was i saying yes i've got two book pages here and the text is the same i can read them both it's the right way but if i were to flip that over so i've got one side so i can read the text and the other so it's upside down and stick them down like that then when i fold it over that's the right way and that's now the right way as well so i haven't got any upside downness at all is that a word probably not but you know what i mean i've got nothing that's upside down which is always good because i i just was it's not a place you want to be guys <laughs> so i'm just going to glue those together i just going to turn you upside down just because i can Hello! <laughs> it's just gone mad now. Right, so I'm sticking this over there. Is, does anybody actually know what I'm doing? 
I've got two pieces of text and I've turned them opposite way up. Whilst Siri and Mr. Fixit are doing their level best to put me off. Right, so they're stuck down just with um, glue stick. Right, so I'm gonna, I don't like all of this masses of white here. Don't mind a little bit, but not all that we've got. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And somebody was asking me yesterday about using quilting rulers. Now I use them because I've always used them because, you know, in my life I've done an awful lot of quilting. But if anybody else on here has swapped to using quilting rulers um, for their journaling, could you just say that you do and if you like them or not? Um, because they're expensive. They're a con considered purchase, really. Um, and this lady was wondering whether it was, whether she would be more accurate if she had a quilting ruler. So, um, I, I think she would be. You know, I, I really love them. I, th I find them very, very helpful. Because you can get your straight edge there along the bottom and then you look up the side and make sure that you're absolutely square. So you've got two um, two lines to go on, which then means surely that you can only be more accurate. Jean wants to know, is the quilting ruler slick on the back? No, it's got... Uh, I don't know. I think it's the, the what they use to print the the lines. I think. Yeah, it's kind of no, it's not. Having said that, you do need to hold it down quite firmly. To be honest, this one that I've got here, that's been a ruler a long time, has actually got bits of non-stick stuff on it, and that's a kind of blessing and a curse, really, because if you get it quite close to where you want it and you just want to edge it. It kind of doesn't want to go, um, but if you um, if you haven't got the facility to use all your hand to hold it down, this one might be a better option. But I I, I love them. I, I I can't imagine junk journaling without them, to be honest. So I've trimmed both edges. They're fairly sort of equal amounts of white on each side, and I'm just going to trim that top bit off because I don't need that. And the same with the uh, white space at the bottom. I think Hilda uses quilting squares now, quilting rulers. Uh, she does. And Donna uses them. Right. So. uses them. Ah, uh, right. Pat uses them. Yeah, that's good. I'm pleased. So I've got two pages here. I'm looking, the text is the right way up for me now. But if I fold that up, this part of the text is now the right way up. Oh dear, it took me all morning to work that out. <laughs> so I'm going to fold this up to being an envelope and then fold the top down. So I'm going to fold it, you know, to there. It's an amount. Your page will be different and then crease it along the bottom. Now, when you come to fold this one down, don't fold it really tight to this because then you won't be able to, there'll be a crease there and you won't be able to get anything out that you've put in. So leave a little gap. There's the top of mine and I'm leaving it to there. So that I'd say that's a good half inch gap, maybe three quarters of an inch even. And fold that over, line it up with the side, crease it down. Make sure just before you give it the final crease that it is completely square. So there we are, we have a text envelope and you can read the text. It's the, not that you want to read it, but you want to see it the right way up. Um, it's the right way up there, right way up there, right way up there. Yes, hooray. And I'm just gonna do a similar thing with this. Um, put it up to about there. Make sure that your edges are level and if you've measured properly that will give you a really nice square line along the bottom. And the same thing, allow, what am I allowing there, a little over half an inch. 
a little over, not much. Make sure that's square along the side again and crease that in. Right then, so what I want to do now is um, sew along this edge here, this edge that's the top of the envelope bit, top of the pocket bit. So I'm going to do that on both of these. Once again, just using the um, a mark on your, your sewing machine foot or a mark on your metal needle plate as a guide. And if you follow that all along, you should get it fairly square. Of course, you might not want yours square. There's a lot of people that do sort of raggedy sewing, if you like. And as you can imagine, that's not what I do. <laughs> um, I'm get caught up on the camera. So just a little stitch at the end just to tie that off. And same on this one. Little little reversing just to tie it off. You don't want it all coming undone. I, I never really go much faster than this, I'll be honest, so I don't know if that helps with proceedings, I don't know. Um, but it never snaps my thread and I just use very cheap thread. I use, for those, I'm not sure if you get it in the US or wherever, but I use thread called Moon Thread. It's a, a very inexpensive thread. So that's that. I've now I've changed my thread from the cream I was using yesterday to this light green. I just like it and I thought it would show up better on camera. I do also think it's quite spring like so um, I was happy to change it. Now the other thing that I will say and I know that you guys have heard me say this a hundred times but the side that you've sewn on uppermost here is always very neat and the back side is, never looks quite so neat. So just take your bone folder and squash it down and it really becomes much neater. So it sinks it more into the page. Right, so there we are. Lovely. But we want it to be an envelope. So what we need to do is sew all the way around it. And then look at this. I'm going to... Uh, dying to show you it so I'm going to show you it look at this napkin look at that have you ever seen anything quite so perfect for what we're doing I adore it so that's going on our envelopes once we've got them done so I'm going to start here go all the way around and all the way up there okay Make sure it's flat, your envelope pocket that is. It's a little bit of reversing. Along the bottom. Yes, the end says every time she sees you so the need for her to do it gets greater and greater. Yeah, I, I really empathise. I know exactly what you mean. you just got to do it, haven't you? But, you know, like I was saying, I've as well as this machine, I've got a Toyota machine, which we bought secondhand. Um, I can't actually remember how much it cost. Was it £22 or something? Um, yes. Um, which we got off... You know the Facebook marketplace thing? Somebody was selling it locally. So we bought it, fully expecting to have to take it for a service or whatever. And I threaded it up. And I could, actually, I couldn't remember how to thread it up. I'd had one earlier in my life, but couldn't remember how to thread it up. So we went on the internet and we found out how to thread it up. And we did just that. And it's honestly a fabulous sewing machine. We've never had it serviced yet. Um, so you don't have to spend a fortune. You really, really don't. 
So there we are, we're round on this one. So we'll just use this one for the moment because if I take the time out to sew the other one, we might not have time to do the um, decoupage, which would be a shame. So I'm just going to push that down like that. Put that to one side. For those of you that didn't see it yesterday that weren't on, <laughs> I've got something really funny to show you. <laughs> Have a look at this. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I see it. <laughs> it's a paper clip. Have a look at a normal sized one by comparison. This is a normal size, nothing small about it. It's a normal size paper clip. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it's like for giant. I absolutely love it. It's hysterical. I've got it out sitting on my desk. It just makes me laugh. <laughs> anyway, that's the was just an aside. <laughs> Let me just have a quick drink. Right, so I'm going to use this. And I've got one, so it's got a count. So this bit in the middle here, I thought it might go nicely along the bottom. What do you think? Let's tear that out and see what we think of that. So I'm tearing it out quite closely to the design. Um, but, you know, taking care not to tear the design itself. And I know that you all know how to decoupage. I know that. So, there we are, that's that one. So what if we put that there, and that's folded over. That's nice, I think that's nice. But what we're gonna put on the top? Mm. This is nice, this, this little yellow one. Let's just tear that out and see, see what it looks like. Now you'll notice the background of this isn't white and that usually gives us grief when we're decoupaging because you can then see the background um, and that's really not what we want to see. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that I have a, an answer to that problem. Time will tell of course. Best laid plans and all that business. Maury seems to think you're going to need a bigger paper clip. <laughs> it, would take up, it would take up the whole desk. I mean, this is just ludicrous. I, just, I can't ever imagine putting that in a journal because I can't ever imagine parting with it. I am so in love with it. It's such a joyful thing to have. It's just hysterical. I love it. Florence sent me that and I'm really uh, thankful to you, Florence, for the joy that you've brought me. And I think it was Hilda that uh, sent me this napkin. You're all such good supporters of our page. I, r I really appreciate it. Thank you, our channel. So there we are. Let's see if I was to put that up there. I need to bring it down a bit because that's going to, yeah. If I was to put that there, what do you think? That looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that. I need something else down here, though. Maybe that could go on there. Mm. Mm, yeah, mm, maybe. Maybe put it on the back, that piece, actually. Um, so I've got this. I just want something else to go with it. So I've got this yellow one here, or this blue one. There's four little separate blue flowers in there. Um, how about that? What would that look like? I think I'll stick with the yellow and go with this. I haven't pre-planned this any more than thinking that that napkin would look nice. That's as far as I've got with the planning. So, sorry guys, you're now getting to see the machinations of my mind. Which probably isn't pleasant. Oh, 
I don't think I need to tear this because I think it's too big but I'm going to anyway so you want to leave a bit of a border around oh, I've just managed to tear that leaf a bit of a border around but not not masses um, and I'm sorry for the time it's taken but it just does right so we've got the other yellow one there that matches this one so were I to put that there and this down here what would that look like I think it would look all right but sorry guys I think the blue would look better Sorry about this. This is the thing, you have to audition things um, and see which looks the best. Because in your mind's eye, everything looks fantastic. <laughs> or at least in my mind's eye, everything looks fantastic. And then you get to put it down, you think, no, that wasn't, that isn't the look I had in my mind. So before I tear that out too carefully, let's just have a look. So that's going there. And that's going there. Yeah, I think I like that better. Yeah, got a fly now. So I'm just going to tear that out slightly more carefully. Now I know I'm going to use it. Can tear that off there. Right, so let's have a look then. I don't want to lose lose those blue flowers up under here. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Now then, if I was to use the ordinary um, Mod Podge or um, you know the ordinary clear stuff that dries clear, you would definitely see this um, sort of off-white pale green background that there is. However, I think I have the answer, and it's this stuff. It's um, Tim Holtz Distress Collage Medium, and it's in vintage. It's that colour. And I think that that will be the solution to our problems. I'm hoping so. I'm just going to put a bit of um, kitchen towel down because I don't want to get this. I love Tim Holtz Collage Medium. It's just the best of all of the uh, glues that I've used. Um, and I'm just going to get myself a bit of cling film out, just in case I get some creases. Oh, saran wrap. Yeah. Eh? Oh, saran wrap. Saran wrap, yeah. yeah. And I'm just going to stick that to my chest in that manner. So I can see that, so you're all right. Oh, right. Well, it's just... <laughs> It's just stuck across my chesticles just so I can grab it and use it. <laughs> and the, the static is holding it to my t-shirt. <laughs> you don't need to do that. <laughs> oh dear, but it's in a handy <laughs> And I've always wondered why my sandwiches tasted like they did. <laughs> It's in a handy place if you need to grab it, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Right, so that's going there. Okay, let's just get on with this, like everything's normal. <laughs> so I'm going to put this down here, and you'll see instantly that it is a um, uh, vintage colour. And put this over there. Let's just check where that's coming to. So I want that about there. Oh, it's dropped off. My static electricity stopped. Somebody put 50p in the meter. So over the top with that vintage um, collage medium. And you see, it just, it just looks darker. It just looks nice. I like that. And the same with this over here. In fact, you want it over the whole page. So it all just gets that darker vintage look to it. 
So there we are, let's just see where I want this. Yeah, that wants to go pretty much up to the top, to about there. And then just starting from the middle, work your way out, but you guys all know how to do this. Jen says, throw away the bras away, ladies use Fiona's king wrap. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> and then he says, talk about getting things off your chest. <laughs> oh dear, I know I'm mad. I've never, I've never professed to be anything else. <laughs> that says, keeps them fresh. <laughs> Who said that part? Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, now you say because it's dropped off it's got all wrinkly. I've lost my static. <laughs> Normally I would have that there and then just pop it down like that and it would be perfect. So I'm just going over that just to make sure that they're flat, but actually they were anyway. So, And then now it's all, now it's all going wrong. <laughs> so just carefully peel that back and you should have some nice decoupage there lovely and it's yes you can see where it is but this vintage uh, glue has aged it back a bit so we'll wait for that to dry and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the bits that uh, aren't quite as dark in the meantime I can cut these excess bits off I don't have a use for them Oh dear, the things you get up to when you jump journaling. It's ridiculous. Oh dear. It all started with flaws. Was that the cling film that went wrinkly? And it was, wasn't it, of the paper? No, it was the cling film. It was the cling film. The, the paper is actually, well, where I dare say, it's pretty good. Miranda uh, says, cling film bras clipped on with giant paper clip. <laughs> Jean's still laughing at <laughs> chesticles. <laughs> chesticles. Oh dear. Oh. Okay, Roberts wants to know, is that a glue too? Can you yes, glue? yes, absolutely. It is a glue. It's just like Mod Podge, except it's thinner. Um, so it's a bit more forgiving. If you put it down and you've got it in the wrong place, with this stuff, you can get it up again uh, and put it down. Those of you that watch me for a while, you'll see when I use Mod Podge, I use it extremely watered down. And that then affords the same thing that you can um, you get a second chance at positioning it, um, if you like. So we've got this top to do and we need to do something with that, I think. Um, I need to dry this, guys. Sorry about this. Laugh amongst themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Clean film bra held on with giant paper clips. <laughs> oh dear. I'm going to laugh about that for a while. <laughs> I could do it, mine being a bit more static, to be honest. Gravity's cruel, is all I can say. Right, there we are. It was dry to type, and it came out as testicles. <laughs> and she's trying to blame the fact that she speaks Afrikaans. No. No. <laughs> that one's not floating. It's not floating. <laughs> Right, oh, so there we are. Look, look, look what we've achieved. So I'm thinking that this will go on there, like so. And I can just bring that down a little bit so as I can get all of that on the top. What do you think, guys? I think that's going to be okay. Jim wants to know if you could add a little distress ink to your Mod Podge to get the same effect. Well, somebody asked me that before, and the answer to that is I don't know. I can't say yes and I can't say no because I've never tried it and I'd hate to lead you all up the garden path but Jen should you wish to give it a go and let us know oh Hilda thought she said you said testicle Hilda thought us Hilda she's trying to blame it on me now isn't she yeah yeah it's called projection 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to put this down on here so as I've got all these the flowers at the top. So I might lose that green, I might lose some of it, might lose all of it, I don't know what I'm going to lose yet and put this over the top. Spread it out nicely. Right to the edge of there. So there we are, that's nice. I'm not going to use any cling film this time because you just laugh at me. <laughs> I just laugh at myself, really. I don't think I need any cling film anyway. It's pretty, it's pretty flat. So I'm just going to cut off along there and see what I've got left of the green. I wouldn't advise doing this while it's wet. You're better off leaving it till it's dry, to be honest. But I want to show you what I've got. So there we are, that's that. So I need that to dry too. And that's a pretty envelope, isn't it? Actually, that's really pretty. We've still got the back to do. Get off. Um, actually, I'm just, just going to use my cling from a bit that hasn't got any... Oh, just ripped it there. But that hasn't got any glue on it, if I can find a bit. And because it's just that bottom edge... It's not stuck down because I don't want to put too much glue over the edge. And so there we are. Peel that off carefully. And it's lovely and flat. So finished with that for the time being. Once it starts to get sticky, it's not much use really because it, it sticks to the decoupage. Um, so we're doing all right. Just need to dry that, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so that's near enough for uh, what I want to show you, really. So you can see that um, this, the vintage, makes a, a heck of a difference. It really does tone it down. But we still have areas um, that haven't got the napkin on that are a bit lighter. So I think you've probably all seen me do this before. Um, I'm looking for a... I'm looking for a stencil. Okay, I can't find what I'm looking for, so I'll use this. This is uh, once again the. I had it in a in a box, but then Mr. Fix it took it away somewhere to show you something. I've never seen it since. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll use this. This is fine. And I'm just going to put that over the sort of lighter areas, and get my antique linen um, ink out. And just put some little hint of a little butterfly in there. No, that's not working because it's um, the stencil's too big. Hmm. Well, what can I do? What can I do? There has to be a better way. Now I've put ink all over that. No, that's stuck on. <laughs> Maybe a darker ink would work better. I could get that up there. Let's just try that again. No, it's not working. Okay, well, I'll have to finish that off on the next live because I, I, I can't find the stencil that I want to use. Um, it's it's gone walkabout somewhere. It's a little one with roses on it, but it's uh, not here. Mm -hmm. A stencil. I think you had it when you were doing the inks and oxides. I don't I don't know where it got put. Um, probably went into the box. 
Right, so this is the page that's, that we're looking for the envelope for. And as you can see, it's nicely uh, aged, that page. Now, um, and so when this goes in there, it's going to really, really match that. It's a perfect match. And you could even put it on there if you wanted to with a safety pin. Just hold it on there, put it in there. The back also, I mean, look at the difference when you actually see what we've paper clip, not safety pin. Uh, paper clip, yeah. When you see what we started with and what we finished with, it's quite incredible, really. And you can do the same if the back of the napkin was white, you can do exactly the same using that uh, vintage medium. So you just attach that onto there, it comes off, you can open the page. Or you could attach, you know, if you had a bigger envelope, I'm just limited by the, the book that I've got. But if you had a bigger book or you wanted to make it out of music paper, uh, they usually come, you know, a bit bigger than this. And you could tuck it in there like that. Or when you've got the back done, you could tuck it over there like that. And that would look, I mean, that's just lovely. I love that. Might have to do the back, actually. Do you guys want to stick with me while I do the back? Well, if you don't, you can always go, can't you? Because I'm not, I'm not holding you to your chairs and I'm not the police and I'm not your mum. <laughs> so if you want to go, just go. So, right. So how about that up there? That's really nice. And this yellow one a bit further over that way. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. It's at this stage um, when I was doing the white one that I used my eyeshadow to blend the background. Uh, I'll show you guys now if you missed that excitement the other day. I didn't actually use my eyeshadow, I just shown you, showed you the bit that I'd used my eyeshadow on. And actually it worked really quite well, so I recommend eyeshadow as a form of um, colouring. Jean's got to go. Who? Jean? Yeah. Thanks, Jean, for watching. Sorry to keep you so long. Have a nice day, whatever it is that you're off to do. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, um, see you next week. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, this this light green colour was actually eyeshadow that I just rubbed in, and I thought we got a nice effect with that. But this I'm just going to... I quite like the idea of having them sort of more over like that. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a beautiful napkin and it's so perfect for uh, going on the Edith Holden page. I think it's just, just the ticket. So just put some collage medium down first. I've got some water on my brush so it looks like I'm putting more on than I am. So I'm going to put it over the entire um, back of this just to make sure it's all the same tone and it's the sort of stuff that you can add to you know if you use um, shiny Mod Podge sometimes you can't get anything to stick to it afterwards uh, this is this is fine you can get anything to stick I'm a great fan of this stuff actually really great fan of it so let's just decoupage that down onto there like so and then this little one got a little bit sticking up um down onto there because you will have your own book you'll have your own napkins and of course it's going to turn out very different to mine i was just delighted when i saw this napkin and i knew instantly what i was going to use it for So there we are, all nice and flat. And I'll show you next time when I find my stencil and this is all properly dry, uh, what I do. It'll be around somewhere, don't worry. We'll find it. So I'm just gonna cut that off. It, it'll need um, tidying up when it's dry, but just to give you an idea. There we go. I'm going to save that bit. It's too nice to throw away. 
So there we go, that's the back. So if you were to stick it, uh, put it in your journal like that, that's what you would see. And doesn't that match? It just matches perfectly. It's beautiful. You couldn't find a better napkin. Although I did try last night on, on uh, Amazon. <laughs> Spent hours looking at napkins for decoupage. And I'm, I mean hours. Um, my Amazon basket is overflowing. So I'm just going to dry that off quickly. dry enough for us to handle so there we are there's a really gorgeous little envelope um, we fathomed out the way to get the writing going the right way and as I say you could put it uh, that way and uh, put your paper clip there you could put it inside there you could put it that way so as you've got that flap lying with this flap and have that there which looks really nice actually um, that probably will be the way that I'll go with that and it needs something inside it and you might decide also just to either ink down or put some of that distress uh, vintage on there because it's quite light by comparison or you may decide that's fine you're happy with that um, when I come to do the stencils I will put stencils on there I just can't I've mislaid it um, but I'll show you that next time. And in the meantime, I think we're, well, we're not doing so bad, really. I think we've done okay. So that will go on to there. Then we've got this uh, design sheet, which I'm going to leave because it's got some space for journaling. Uh, this big page that folds out. I'll probably do something with that. Put something on it. A design sheet. And then we've got the... Um, beautiful centre spread which is the Edith Holden one I mean that's just gorgeous and today what have we managed to achieve well we've got we've done this which is very pretty very pretty indeed just to fix it's just found a stencil it's not the one I'm looking for but it might just do the trick um, so I'll use it on this bit here first and all I'm going to do is use my uh, antique linen. Now, with this vintage, you might be better using tea dye or something like that uh, to get it to show up. But just a little bit there. And a little bit more here. Just turn my stencil around so I'll get a different aspect. This is darker than I would normally do these stencils because I want it to match the, the vintage. So that's nice. So when you when you lift that up now, this is what you see, and that's much better. I'm happier with that. Um, and let's just try a little bit down the side here and see if you can see what it was I was trying to say to you. So I'll get some ink on there and let's just do this stencil. I don't think it's dry enough um, either to do it. No, so just we'll just have to wait. We'll just have to be patient with that. Um, but at least you can see the inside, how nice that looks. So there you go. I think that we have achieved something today anyway, more than we did yesterday. Um, I will, perhaps I'll pop up in the week, perhaps I won't, I don't know. Um, it would be a funny week if I didn't. So I, I likely will see you at some stage during the week. But in the meantime, Mr. Fixit is going to... I've lost the bit of paper, here we are, is going to show you how to how to do this. And it's that is a fabulous thing to know, I think. You know, to take things uh, and put them onto something else, make them more transparent or make the background more, tra whatever. He'll show you how to do that. Um, and I think that's a handy thing to know. 
You can make your own design sheet. Brilliant. You could do one for the collaborative journal. You could do one for the collaborative the journal. It, yeah. On the postage. Yeah, absolutely you could. Um, talking of the collaborative journal, for people that are new to us, if you pop over to the Facebook page, Miss Paint-A-Lot's Junk Journal Group, we've got a collaborative journal going. And I'm asking everybody to do one uh, piece of A4 or letter size. So that's this, this size, folded in half like this. So we've got one, two, three, four pages to decorate. And uh, send them to me and I will put them into a journal. And then everybody that has collaborated, their names will go into the heart. Let's hope Siri's having a good day that day. And uh, select somebody who will get to keep our journal forever. And what a wonderful thing to own, I think. Uh, so um, they have to be in to me by the 14th of August. There is a slight bit of leeway on that. You know, if it arrives on the 15th, 16th, 17th, it'll still go in, don't worry. Because of the COVID thing, um, the postal service is not really up to full chat again. So, um, yeah, try and get them to me by the 14th of August. If you live... Uh, internationally and the postage is prohibitive and I know it is very expensive from some parts of the world then consider just taking a photograph and emailing it to, to us and we will print it out and uh, put it in the journal for you. Once Mr Fixit has shown you how to do this fading in and out and making really gorgeous pages you may think that that's the way that you want to go and that's how you're going to um, represent yourself in the collaborative journal if that's the case that's fine just do what you've got to do email it to us we'll print it out and put it in the journal um, that might be a good answer for people who are in this country and are shielding who don't want to go out uh, or as i say international postage or people that are unwell and can't get out to the post office so there are different ways of going about it can i also say that we've got lots of pages that are quite thick and so if you want to send a, if your entry is a piece of coffee stained paper with some stamps on that's absolutely fine that will fit in really well in the journal so don't worry about it it's not a competition at all it really isn't it's just going to be a thing of enormous beauty and great love I think uh, that somebody will get to keep forever so um, you've got to be in it to win it so send, you'll find my address on the Facebook group Miss Painter Lots Junk Journal group and I'm in the rack list uh, and you'll find my address there if you've got problems just uh, message me and I'll give you my address um, and I hope that as many of you as possible can enter that it, it, it will be a lovely thing so that's pretty much all I've got to say today. I've really enjoyed your company this weekend. You've been great. We've had some fantastic laughs, which um, keep me going through the week. And Mr Fixit will be with you to show you his trickery and wizardry with Word. So that might be worth watching. I'm sure it will be. And I'll see you definitely next Saturday, maybe before. Thanks for joining. Bye.